So we have our poly logarithm, and we, we know that its definition is that uh, li sub s of z is equal to this series z to the n over n to the s. All right, uh, simple enough. But now what I want to do is actually look at what this thing is really equal to in terms of stuff that we know uh, for certain values of s. And so in particular, let's, let's, I mean, so first let's look at s equals 1 and see, you know, well, you know, is this series something that we already know? Okay, well, let's think about it. So uh, s equal 1, what's that going to be? Well, this is just going to be uh, sum from n equals 1 to infinity. Uh, z to the n over n. All right. Well, all right, that's fine. But what is this thing, right? Is what, what is this in terms of functions that we know? Well, what do we know? Uh, we know that the Taylor series for log of one plus z is equal to sum n equals one to infinity of minus one to the k or to the n minus one times x to the n all over n. Uh, so this almost looks like this, right? Um, but what would we have to do to change it? Well, this should be a z. Um, so how, how do we make this the same? Well, the problem is this thing's alternating. So one way that we can fix that is by uh, taking this z to be negative, right? If we take this, this z to be negative, we do, if we look at ln of one minus z, uh, then what do we get? Then we get that this whole thing is equal to minus some n equals 1 to infinity, z to the n over n, right? And we know it's minus out in front because we have a minus sign for all of the n minus, you know, for n minus 1, and then we're going to have a minus z to the n, so we're going to have minus 1 times n minus 1 times minus 1 to the n. And so what that just means is that every term is going to be negative, right? But, I mean, so with the, but that means that this whole thing right here is already, is, is done, right? That means that this, this series right here is actually just equal to minus... Um, natural log of one minus z, and so, and and, it was, and actually, you know, th this is where this is where the name polylog comes from. I mean, th it's if, if we pick s equals one, uh, then we get we get a logarithm. We, we get this logarithm. You know, the argument's a little funny, but but we've got a logarithm. Um, okay, well, mate, you know, that that that's neat. We're kind of starting to ground this in 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 the reality that we're familiar with. Um, but let's so so let's look at it maybe another case that we might be able to just figure out from the series what it is. So let's try let's try s equals zero, li sub zero of z. What's this equal to? Well, zero. Uh, that means that what? That means that this whole thing right here is just going to be all, all these ends are going to just be set equal to one. And we're just going to have uh, this series right here. Well, we know exactly what this is. This is, this is a very famous series. This is going to be equal to, um, well, I mean, this is the geometric series, right? This is going to be equal to z over 1 minus z. Okay, kind of, kind of cool. We've got two, uh, two of these polylogs figured out. Um, but what else can we do? Well, we know from the previous video that just by starting with, uh, by, by, by taking one of these that we know, we can iterate between different values of s by taking either the derivative or the integral. And so I'll remind you that uh, we, last time we derived that z times the derivative of our polylog sub s of z uh, gets us ls or li sub s minus 1 of z. So this shifts us down by, by 1. And we can kind of check that here, right? So if we start with um, li sub 1 right here, you can see that if you take a derivative of this guy, multiply it by z, you get this guy right here. So we know that this property works. Uh, likewise, likewise, we know that if we take this integral from 0 to z of our polylog divided by the variable, then this guy right here is going to give us li sub s plus 1 of z. And so what that means then is that uh, starting with li sub 0 here, if we integrate 1 over 1 minus z, we get back up to this guy up here. And that, that's exactly what we do get. Okay. Um, so, now I mean, now, now we can actually use some of these properties here to iterate through these and, and, and figure out what, what we get for a whole, whole range of different values. So, let's maybe try and do li sub minus 1 of z. li sub minus 1 of z, that's going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to z dz 
of this guy right here, z1 minus c. And we know how to take this derivative right here, and what we get is z over 1 minus z squared. Okay, we can keep doing the same thing, right? Just keep on multiplying by z and taking derivatives, and we'll, we'll keep on getting stuff like this. If we do it again, we get z times 1 plus z over 1 minus z cubed. And you can keep doing this on and on and on, and, and, you'll, and you'll ultimately get just a, a huge product of polynomials on top divided by a bunch of polynomials in the denominator. Uh, and so that, that's kind of a, neat, because that means that whenever we see something like this, or some problem that looks like this, we can reform it in terms of a poly logarithm, and, th and then we know something about it, right? I mean, if I, if I just showed you this function one day and said, you know, all right, you know, tell me about it. Well, you know, I don't know, this is just some weird looking function, but once we put it in the frame of a poly logarithm, then we, we instantly know something about it. We know it's series, uh, we know how it's related by integration and differentiation to other functions. And so, you know, that, that's why it's kind of good to know the stuff. But okay, we know we, we've looked at li sub zero minus one minus two, you know, we can go down the minus n if we wanted to. Uh, let's try building up. So if we, we know for instance that we have, uh, well yeah, so let's, let's try and get li sub two of z for example. So we know one, we know one is this guy right here. And so that means that li sub two is gonna be integral zero to z minus log, natural log of one minus t over t dt. Okay, so if we could solve this integral, then we would have our our second uh, poly logarithm. And this guy has a special name. This is called the die logarithm, die for this two right here. And it's also special because uh, this integral right here does not have a closed form in terms of elementary functions. So down here, we were able to get some nice stuff by just differentiating the log. Now, uh, we can't do this in terms of elementary functions. So, so, and so now this is where this poly logarithm is starting to become a bit more useful because we have this, this hard integral right here that no one can do. But because we've, we've introduced it in the context of a poly logarithm, we, we already know something about it. We know it's series and we know how to, we, can, we, can re, we can relate it to, to other functions. And you can in principle keep doing this. So you could, um, you know, you know th this is some special function we don't know how to solve. You know, if you want to iterate up again, then you could get li sub three, which is the tri logarithm, and and you could keep iterating like that, and you would get a whole bunch of higher uh, higher values. Um, and yeah, and then and then you would have this full spectrum of different poly logarithms at integer values of s. Uh, so I think I'll stop there. Really, really, the point of this video is to sort of start being able to recognize when stuff shows up that you can put in the form of a poly logarithm. So if you see stuff that shows up like this or, or like integrals with respect to logarithms, then you know the light bulb should be going off in your head that, wait a minute, maybe this is a problem that I can reformulate as a poly logarithm and, and learn something interesting about the problem through that. Um, but I think I'll stop there.